If you're expecting to fire the ball by jumping off a cliff, doing a 360 no scope across the map, wool bang nonsense, then you're in the wrong game. Go back to playing Call of Duty, you noob. We're playing Monster Hunter here. Once again, if you're new to my video, this is just how I use the weapon. I won't be going too crazy deep with those numbers because I'm just like Mason. I don't know what the numbers mean, my man. I'm also just a casual player, so don't be expecting some speedrunning straps from me. Firstly, you need to know about critical distance. This basically determines whether you're going to get the most damage out of your attacks, and aiming your bow will tell you this. When it says you're out of range, that's the game telling you that your damage is going to be as non-existent as my happiness. When you see the circle, that's when you're at a good distance to deal some damage. Not the best damage, but you can hit the monster from that range. Now if you see two circles, that's when you're able to deal the best damage possible. This is the range that you should always be aiming for. You can still get away with the single circle, but obviously you want to delete the monster as soon as you possibly can, and not die trying. With that out of the way, let's talk about firing the bow. Now you might be thinking, what is this guy on about? I know how to fire a bow, just shoot. Uh, that's what I thought. When I first started playing with the bow, I used to charge up my shots every time I fought. And oh boy, you should not be doing that. There's two ways that you should be firing the bow. One of the ways is to constantly fire the bow. Doing it like this will easily charge the bow without holding down the trigger and it's much better than waiting around for a single shot. You might as well get your damage in rather than wait for a single powerful shot. The other way is to make use of the charging dash. Whenever you evade while aiming, this dash will be performed and it will help with charging up your next shot. The dash can only allow you to move forward, left, right and backwards from your original position. Now hold on, I kind of jumped a little bit in the deep end. For you people, that have never used the bow at all, depending on how long you charge the bow by holding down the firing button, your next shot will have increased damage compared to firing it without charging up the bow. There's three levels of charge shots. Level one is just firing the bow without charging. Level three is when the bow is fully charged. And level two is in between them. However, there are ways to avoid this method of charging up shots because doing it like this will make your fights way too long and we want to be optimal here. Even though I'm not a speedrunner, I still don't want to be taking forever to defeat one monster. Okay, back to the two methods. So you can either constantly fire the bow or perform a dash to easily charge the next shot. The difference between them is the stamina drain. You need to be able to manage your stamina carefully so that you don't get yourself killed by the monster. Performing the dash obviously drains more stamina than constantly firing the bow. Also, if you haven't noticed, Performing almost any action with the bow drains your stamina. Firing, dodging, and the other stuff involving the bow will drain stamina. If I have to be honest, I mostly use the dash to charge up my shots. I rarely constantly fire shots because that method has a low damage output. I would probably use it only to regain my stamina, but other than that, dash is the way to go. There's also a way to make full use of this dash, which I'll explain in a bit. For now, I need to explain the power shots. This move has the shortest range out of the bow's attacks. As you can see, it fires like a shotgun, so don't be expecting to be firing this from one side of the room to the other. You can do this move straight after firing a shot, or after a dash and pressing B. Depending on the charge level, this move will fire more arrows, which means more damage. Most, if not all bow users will make sure that this move is at max level, and the best way to do that is by using the dash. This is where I'll make you learn how the dash will save your life and make you love using the bow. As I said before, dashing will charge up your next shot. But what I didn't say is that you can make your next shots stay at max level. Let me explain. So after firing the bow at max level, whether that be holding down the firing button or through dashing, if you input another dash and fire the bow straight after, that shot will be at max level. Keep looping that over and over and your shots will always stay at that level. You can also add in a power shot in between and the power shot will be at that level. There's some times where I would see the monster perform an attack while I've dashed to another location. Instead of firing another shot and getting potentially hit, I would dash away again. Doing this will still keep the bow at max charge, so the next shot will be ready. This continuous loop of dashing and firing is known as dash dancing. Not only are you keeping the bow shot at the highest level, 
Dashing allows you to continuously reposition yourself and avoid monsters' attacks. Also, it's so much fun using the bow like this. The only downside to dash dancing is the stamina drain. This takes chunks out of your stamina bar, so once again, you have to be very careful. There's some armor skills to help with the stamina problem, which I'll talk about later on. Alright, the next move to know about is a controversial one, because using this will annoy other players, and that's the arc shot. I actually really love using this move because I have no friends to play with. This move can easily be done by pressing B again after the power shot. You can also specifically aim in a direction for the arc shot to land in an area of your choosing, but I don't use this move at all. I just spam this move anywhere in the hopes that the monster will catch itself in the move. Or I just position myself in a way that makes the monster run towards the rocks. The rocks from the arc shot can KO monsters and are affected by the charge level of the bow meaning that the higher the level, the more damage this attack will do, and there's more rocks. This move is really good for knocking out monsters. Sadly, using this move online will make players try to find where you live so they can beat you up. The reason why is because it interrupts or flinches other players. So to be a good sport, either use this carefully or don't use this at all with online players. Unless you can somehow convince your party members to use the flinch free skill, because that will help with not getting slapped by those rocks. But no one wants to waste a skill slot for one problem. I guess I should address the Dragon Piercer. And once again, the hardcore optimal speedrunners will be at my throat because they really hate this move. This move is one of this weapon's strongest attacks, but the time it takes to fire the shot is not worth it according to those gamers. They will say that you can use that time to fire more arrows rather than charging up the piercer. Also, you miss out on some damage potential because it pierces through the monster, and depending on the monster's body, you might not get all the damage you want from this attack. I use this move for fun though. If you want to have a fun time playing the game, then I would go for using it. I don't care hardcore players, just let me play how I wanna. If you want to do this move, all you have to do is press Y and B together. This move is also affected by the bow's charge level, so once again, max level equals max damage. The other strongest attack that the bow has is the Thousand Dragons. This is a DLC only move, so if you don't have Iceborne, then goddamn you're missing out. This move is easily done by pressing down the right stick and pressing Y and B while aiming. If you want more damage, then you're gonna need some slinger ammo. Depending on the slinger ammo you picked up, this move will be affected by it. I would only use this move when the monster is down, and it's just fun to use. The other thing I haven't mentioned is the coatings, and that's because I rarely use them. Which is slightly a bad thing, but I just can't be bothered to use it. Applying a coating is easily done by pressing Y while you have the bow on sheath. Every attack fired from the bow will have that coatings effect. Each bow has their own coatings that can be used. If you think you're missing out a specific coating, then you just didn't read the fine print. In other words, check the bow's coating compatibility. All bows have access to the close range coating, and this coating is exactly as it says. It's used for close range combat, and it will reduce the range of your shots. So don't even try thinking that it's good for long range. This coating can be used an infinite amount of times, whereas the others have limited resources, depending on how much you're carrying. To be honest, I use the bow without any coatings throughout my time playing the game, though I think it's fine if you forget about it, but I think I've just triggered some bow users out there. I'll see you guys in the comment section. Armor skills are very important for bow users because without it, that stamina bar will be as bad as you waiting for your game to not arrive on day one. Let's quickly talk about which ones you need. Constitution is a must have because of the amount of dashing you'll be doing. Stamina surge for that quick stamina regain. Evade extender and window helps a tiny bit when it comes to increasing the distance of that dash and avoiding monsters attacks. Razor shot slash spare shot can be useful for having the chance of not using up coatings. And Bow Charge Plus is a must have because of more damage. You can go for those skills that increase the damage of specific shot types like Normal Shot, but I feel like it's a waste. Slinger Capacity is also a choice for that thousand dragons damage, but again, it's not really needed. Just a quick summary of it all so that you're not lost. Make sure you're in the critical distance to get the best damage. Make use of dash dancing to keep the bow at max level. 
repositioning, and avoiding monsters attacks. Arc shots are great for knocking out monsters, but best use it offline solo rather than pissing off players. Dragon Piercer and Thousand Dragons is fun, but not really good for your DPS damage per second for you hardcore gamers. Use coatings for more damage or applying status effects. It's not a must have since I've played without it, but I'm gonna guess it would have helped. You should also look out for each monster's weak points for using the bow so that you can get the best damage out of your attacks. Oh, you should also use the clutch claw to tenderize monster body parts so that you can easily damage them. Just remember though that the clutch claw is only available through the DLC. That's the bow, a really fun weapon to use against those flying monsters, but again, don't be expecting to be sniping them from afar. I might have missed out on something, so if I did, be sure to drop it down in the comments below. Hope you found the video useful, be sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I shall see you guys later.